742 is your time this morning. When an electric vehicle catches on fire, it can burn for hours. There's also a risk of electric shock to anyone who is nearby. Now, as on your side, Susan Campbell reports, fire departments across the state are scrambling to try to combat this issue. It's really scary, Susan. Yeah, they're looking for newer, safer ways to do this, and firefighters say it's really actually their new hazmat. And though EV fires are rare, as more people drive EVs, firefighters are expecting more calls to these really challenging fires. When a Tesla crashed and burst into flames in Scottsdale, it reignited on the tow truck. And on a California highway, it took firefighters three hours and 6,000 gallons of water to stop this EV from burning. Electric vehicle fires have become uh, really a pain for us. And they're dangerous and costly. We're still figuring out ways to deal with them. Everything from, uh, you know, putting them in a dumpster, loading sand on top of them and, and possibly even burying them to some cases. Right now, uh, you know, we're all scrambling to come up with a better ways. You said you're scrambling because there's not one standard tool yeah. to put out these fires, it sounds like. Yeah, there isn't. But there are some new tools that could help. Here's one of them. It's called the turtle. For this demonstration, this isn't an electric vehicle. Firefighters say it would be too dangerous to purposely set one on fire. The problem with electric vehicles is trying to cool the battery pack. Manufacturers recommend doing that with lots of water, but those batteries are hard to get to. So the turtle slides right under the car and sprays water straight up. We flow over 500 gallons a minute at 150 PSI. Firefighters are also testing out thermal blankets big enough to cover entire vehicles. When you look at the blanket, you think, oh, it put the fire out. It, it actually can't. It's impossible to stop a lithium ion battery fire. So the blanket, it does a great job of, of isolating and, ex and limiting exposures. On your side surveyed several fire departments around the state. The city of Goodyear told us they have blankets that are similar to this on two battalion trucks really taking time for science to catch up and try to find ways to safely extinguish lithium battery fires. Michael Brooks is the executive director of the Center for Auto Safety. He says the solution will require federal funding. With this massive rollout and push from the government for electric vehicles, we should have, but we haven't had a corresponding push for what happens when things go wrong. And that's a conversation we really need to have and we need to have it quick. A 2020 report by the NTSB highlighted the risk for electric shock and uncontrolled increases in temperature and pressure, which is known as thermal runaway. The report was also critical of manufacturers saying the instructions in most manufacturers' emergency response guides for fighting high-voltage lithium-ion battery fires lack necessary vehicle-specific details on suppressing the fires. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation, which represents manufacturers, said safety is a top priority for our members, which is why they've been engaged in longstanding efforts to address fire risks for both conventionally fueled vehicles and EVs, including working with consumers, the first responder community and other stakeholders at the local, national and international levels. It's going to be a very, very different response for someone in a rural setting where they can just let that car burn because ultimately that's the best way to get rid of the problem because it consumes all the fuel. If you're downtown in, in Phoenix, that's not really going to work out for you to just let the car burn or if you're in a parking garage like that. Look 50 years into the future for me. What does EV firefighting look like? Well, I think this is going to be about a 10 to 15 year problem. Battery technology is evolving really quickly. Um, I think within 10 years you'll have solid state batteries, which can't catch on fire because of the chemistry. So way in the future, problem solved. Right now, it's that's, a conundrum. That's right, it is. And, and it's uh, technology's kind of just forced this upon us faster than everyone's ready for. According to research by Auto Insurance Easy, EVs have a 0.03% chance of catching on fire compared to gas-powered vehicles, which have a 1.5% chance of catching on fire. Hybrids have about a 3.5% chance.